Yes, lads, what's going on? Welcome back to a Leeds United career mode episode. No intro for this one. Let's get straight into it. Because we only have 20 days left of this January transfer window. And I might actually want to make a couple of deals. Who knows? And we've still managed to keep hold of all our big time players at the club so far. We also have this massive rivalry game against Chelsea as well. So there's no time to wait. So sit yourselves down, relax, and let's get into this one. We're currently sitting sixth in the league. Just a point between us and Chelsea, but also neck and neck on points with Man United and Spurs right behind does by two points so it's not a secure feeling here in sixth place in the league i think we're just gonna flip flop up and down several times this season but if we can beat chelsea in the game today that would mean we leapfrog them into fifth which is europa league football that would be wild now, i'm still expecting to see offers come in for some of the bigger players we've got one here for christopher ayer who has had his ups and downs at the club that's safe to say he's one minute he's happy the next minute he's not reminds me very much as my girlfriend I uh, I don't know if we should keep him. I mean, at this juncture, we probably should. He's 81 overall, and he's done a good job for us. And at this period in time, he actually seems to be somewhat happy. But the back line is somewhere where I am contemplating maybe improving it because we've been seeing quite a lot of goals conceded recently, which is frustrating. I'm also going to transfer this Jaden Anthony. His career has been fine here. It's been good. He had that really good first season, but to be fair, since we've moved to the Prem, he's not really had the game time. We're going to get an offer in for him pretty much straight away. It's going to be 13 million from Wolves. I think Wolves is a realistic move for him, so I don't want to see this one slip away. I'm going to accept it. Jed and Anthony will most likely choose to make that move to Wolves. Or maybe he won't because we've instantly got a few more bids come in. Crystal Palace is another great option for him, seeing him play in the Premier League still. But we got one in from Valencia where they're offering me Passa Dakar. Passa Dakar is a player I wanted, a player who I thought could do great things here at the club, but we didn't decide to sign him and we are pretty comfortable up top at the minute with Eka TK, Joseph and Pirau so I'm going to reject it. I think also for Jed and Anthony's career it makes sense for him to stay in the Premier League. But less of that, time to take on Chelsea. This is their starting 11. It's good. They're all very good at football. Robin Cox starts for them today against his former side. And this will be our 11 Pirau, Ruta, Trezor and Fatou. Someone said maybe move Fatou up top. It's an option. I just feel like we use our striker to link the play up and that is allowing our wingers right now to be so potent so putting Fatou up there. I'm not sure he'd be as good at holding the ball, probably better at running in behind. And of course now, we do have our familiar partnership in the centre of the park of Gray and Skip. Them two are bossing it. I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. I think... Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like we're fairly even when it comes to playing against Chelsea right now with this team. Fatou finds space. Pirro's making a run. I'm going to get it into him. He chests it down. Pirro right at the start. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's from the kickoff. We win the ball back with Pirro and Jorginho, and it leads to that attack with Fatou. Lost the ball in. Pirro's in fine form at the minute. I'm praying, praying to the FIFA gods. The no bid's coming for him, but this ball from Fatou is lovely. Chest slots at home. Slots at home. Beautiful. I Loving it. And it's a super early lead, though, at Stamford Bridge. That, that means nothing. They can easily come back. Dylan gets beyond Van Iwick. Oh, he's gone all the way through, has he? Oh, this is dangerous. This is so dangerous. Get across. Well in, Van Iwick. He recovers. Armour in out. Getting his way into the box. Going to pull it back to Sterling. That's a good ball. Back across to Nkunku. And just like that, Chelsea are back in it. He did not last for long. I said there was just so long left to go in the game, and Chelsea kind of pass you to death. They lull you into this security of tiredness and, and just nausea, and then next thing you know, they score. It's really infuriating. That's a good ball on to Trezor. He's going to have Jorginho. He's going to try and knock it across to Piro. Should have knocked it one more. Piro, you selfish, selfish boy. This could be a massive mistake from Chelsea. What are we doing? What the hell was that? It's a huge mistake, but I don't actually know what that animation was. It wouldn't let me get any closer with Piro. It, that was really strange. Oh, Trezor steals that. Trezor. Trezor still. Trezor then. Inside to Piro. Knocks it back to Jorginho. Jorginho, well blocked. Took too long to set his feet. And it's going to be all square at halftime then. And I'm actually kind of okay with it. I mean, we want to get a win here. But is a point against Chelsea that bad? No, not really. It'll be heavily dependent on how well Manchester United have done though. Because they will be able to leapfrog us if they win their game. It's just going to be a pretty tight race, I think, for Europe this year. So I, we really need to do well in these kind of games, I feel. Two. Knocks that one down to Van Eyweck. Is that Piro in a good position? What are we doing? What were we doing, Piro? Just let it glide all the way through. Sterling on the inside. Sterling, what a save for Melier. Boo now. Good football from him. 
Tries to peel it inside. He does actually. Pirau stands up back. Jorginho. Oh, well blocked from Robin Cook. Oliver Skip with a follow-up will take a corner. You're going to bring on Michael Alisi. So that's where he went. When we were playing Crystal Palace, we wondered. But yeah, he's gone to Chelsea. That is actually a rumor in real life. So, I mean, it's not crazy that that's happened. We made a triple sub as well. We're going to see Greaves come on. I'm going to see Ekatike come on. I had some really tired legs. And Willy Nonto can come on and cause problems. Ekatike is in there. So we'll see what we could do here. Nonto from that position. I told you he could come on and cause problems. Force is a big save from Robert Sanchez. It's going to end here all square in the end. To be honest with you, we couldn't really create that much because Chelsea do just hold the ball. They just, I mean, I guess they play a little bit like that in real life, but they just pass the ball about and you can't get it back. It literally, I spent the last 20 minutes of that match just chasing them. But I think a point here at Stamford Bridge, we will absolutely take that. Manchester United lost to AFC Bournemouth as well, boys. So we don't have to worry about that one leapfrogging us, but it would have been an opportunity for us to get even further ahead of Manchester United, which is the problem. Now, Jaden Anthony has chosen not to go to Wolves because he's going to go to Crystal Palace instead. And with Michael Alisi being out of the club, this could be a very good move for him now to Crystal Palace. Still had no crazy transfer bids come in, though. It's it's really weird. I don't know if it is a patch. I, I don't know, but you normally get some more wilder bid. Come in for your bigger players as we reject that one from Benfica for Archie Gray. And it's just not happened, which has made it so much easier to hold on to our players. Now, with time ticking down, uh, there is still, I mean, there is still in my head some business that we could do. But would I just be signing someone for the sake of it? That's the problem. I kind of feel with a squad size the way it is at 33, I, I just don't think we need anyone. Unless a bid comes in, I, I genuinely don't think there is any need for me to make any moves. And it's really weird. We're going to get Dan Ballard and Pascal... Uh, strike here. It's, it's Burnley for Pascal, so I'm going to reject that one. Ballard, we could let go. I mean, it would give Cresswell more football, but I've actually enjoyed using him, and I really don't want Tyrone Mink, so I'm going to reject that one. Oh, okay, so we have got a big one for Pirro, but it's Frankfurt again. What have Frankfurt been doing that they're so good? I'm going to have to check the Bundesliga to just see if this even would be a realistic move. Oh, okay, so Frankfurt a third in the Bundesliga. So they're actually doing really well. Are they in European competition? So after looking through all of Europe, it turns out that they weren't in any European competition this season. I can't rightly say the move for Pirro to Frankfurt makes sense this year. I'm going to reject it. I think he's having a great season here. I think a bigger club should be coming in for him. But look, it's our game that we're not getting those bids in. As we head to deadline day, we're looking pretty set. We're going to take on Plymouth, though, in the FA Cup because I really want to go far in this competition. Now, we're going to see quite a bit of rotation, obviously, but it's still a strong 11, and Greaves is going to get his first start for me. It's about time we had a youth academy player start to make some waves here in the team. And all we need in this one is just not to have another situation like we had against Middlesbrough where Dan Ballard got himself sent off. Having Fatou still in the starting 11 as well is just ultimate strength in my mind. Well, we've been opened up here early on. Whitaker, well in Dan Ballard. Phillips, a wide there. Van Iwick wants that run. He's got it. Hugo Ekatike, nice touch. It's a hard angle, though. Very good save from Cooper. That's the first real good chance of this game for Leeds United. First real good chance of the game from either side. Well, this is a good ball in behind. If they play it across, they do to Mumba, and he puts it wide. God, we've been given a lifeline there. That was shocking defending once again. But it's sustained pressure from Plymouth. This is not what we expected to see. So at the end of the half, it doesn't feel comfortable in the slightest. We have one opportunity with Ekatike, and then really, it's just a lot of Plymouth pressure. You have to look better this second half, but I mean, and they've instantly started better than us. Yeah. Once Hugo. He's going to get Hugo. Ekatike. That was good. Ekatike. And again. Oh, it goes in. We get pretty lucky, to be fair. It's off the rebound. I'm not really sure that we deserve this. But we do have the lead against Plymouth. Oh, he played a great ball in behind. Whitaker. Oh, what a block, Ballard. I'll tell you something. Plymouth have not played like I imagined Plymouth to play. They have played like Chelsea played in that last game. It's just been tiki-taka. Although Fatou has stolen the football here. This is dangerous. Fatou cuts on the inside. That's great from him. Fatou still has it. Fatou, what a block from Scar in the end. Great run, though. Oh, this time around, it's going to be a red card for the opposition. Dan Scar from Plymouth getting the red. I don't think it'll change out at this point of the game. It's like the 89th minute, but we'll take it. I've got no interest in playing aggressively for the rest of this match. We just, uh, we just want to see this one out. This has been a really rough game against Plymouth. 
They've definitely taken it to us, and we've got a little bit lucky in uh, in spots here. I think the main little bit of luck that we'll remember will be that Bally Mumba miss early on in the game. But Ekatike's goal will see us go through to the next round of the FA Cup. And it does lead us nicely into deadline day, where Victor Osserman has gone from Real Madrid to Juve. What a full circle move that is. That's very interesting. Nance wants to come in for Cody Drama. That's a, a good bid as well, but he's having a good year, so I'm going to reject that. And still, as it stands, just no Real major big bids. And, I mean, that's fine for me i just thought we'd see a little bit more action from some of the bigger clubs towards our players uh, as we get a bid here for kirk which i'm actually going to accept because uh, kirk's never going to make it as a leeds united player and uh, we're just going to keep ticking down the time but as things stand i don't think anything will happen enough at this point to make me go yeah let's move on i've got a short-term loan here for joseph though and i actually think at this stage of the season if i can just give him half a year somewhere else as a starter that actually makes sense because ekatika and piro have not picked up any injuries all season so he's limiting his minutes so i'm going to accept that it had to be until the last two hours that this bid comes in this is insane. This could lead us to be scrambling for our lives. But it is Liverpool. It is Wilfred Nonto, who has been an absolute beast for us this season. With two hours left, I... I feel like I'd normally reject this one, but we haven't sold any superstar in this entire two windows. There's been none of these bids come in that usually force me into making transfers. So... In the sport of negotiation, I'm going to try and maximise as much money as possible we can get from Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool and try and deter them from this one. But I just think if we go 70 million, you can't turn it down. I mean, we're, we're basically at club record already. 51 point See, they're not going to budge. And 51.7 is way too low for me when they're saying I could get like 67 million. Let's try 65. But I think we're actually going to end up keeping Wilford. No oh, my God. They're oh, my. I thought that was such a steep jump from the 51. I need to find. Is there even enough time for this to go through? Do I even sign someone? I don't think there's enough time for this to go through. We'd have to leave on the next hour. Okay, I need to think this through because if we let him go, fine. But we're going to have an hour to negotiate. But if he doesn't... Okay, we're going to do one hour. And if he leaves, we sign someone. If he stays, we don't. Because if he doesn't go, that means he'll be staying. And there we go. So the deal isn't going to go through. Wilfred Nonto will be staying at Lee. Uh, massive news. I wonder if that makes him unhappy. Who knows? But we'll advance this final hour. And as far as I know, Nonto now should not leave. Because there's no time left on the clock. Liverpool came in too late. Wilfred Nonto stays a Leeds United player. God, that was some drama there right at the end of the window. And I thought so. I thought with two hours left, they just didn't have time. Next up in the league, then is West Ham. They've got a strong side. So we're going with a really strong 11 as well. Let's hopefully pick up another win. This could actually be a weird one for Calvin Phillips, right? Because he, he played a little bit for West Ham. Didn't go well for him. And the best part about West Ham and the London Stadium on this year's game... There is no bubbles, and uh, I absolutely love that. Oh, Chabby's got some pace. Chabby whips it across, gets it. Oh, God, kudos did get to it. We get away with it. Leaf Davis not exactly tall, is he? Here I'm making a bit of a run. I'm trying to just stick that one over to him. Force Kurt Zuma into a mistake, maybe. Kudos now breaking forward. Well in Leaf Davis. We've defended really well in this game. We've done nothing else, but we have defended well. At halftime, it may have all been West Ham and good defensive play from us, but... I really need us to take it up another gear in the second half. Hopefully, it's not going to be more of just defensive control because this has been a real dull game for the neutral so far. The skip steals that. Then he wants to loft it in. And what was the ball in? It was terrible. I was going to blame the movement in the box, but I couldn't because the ball in was horrendous. Don't let him shoot. Paqueta, don't let him shoot either. Pascal, beautiful again. Dino found Trezor. Trezor loves to run at the defense. Trezor loves to run at the defense. And Trezor went for it. We're going to need something magical to break them down. Defensively, solid a West Ham. And when I look at the bench, I'm starting to think maybe I should have spent. Because there definitely isn't the answer on the bench for us right now. This game does come very closely behind the Plymouth game, though. Maybe I have to think about that a little bit. But so far, one shot each, none on target. Can you imagine being a fan? Better. Oh, Pascal, you had to get to it. Back to Piquetta. He's only got to take one chance in this game. And West Ham have taken it. Poor defending after a really good defensive performance so far in this match. 
And I have to be honest, I can't see a way that we get it, like anything back into it. It gets a bit unlucky. There with Pascal, I thought he cleared it. But he got enough of a foot on it to get the ball away, but he just didn't. Paquette's really good in those positions. But from this performance overall, I don't see how we bag a goal. There's all running at them. Play it in. Will he? Not oh, oh, what a save. We finally had a bloody shot on target. What a save, though. I can't believe that. That's a bit annoying that he's managed to save that. That is a fantastic save. Now, we've scored from corners in the past, but me playing it between my two centre-backs there is not what I wanted. And look at this from West Ham. Look at this. I'm not even moving. I'm not even moving. This is what the AI do now. How am I supposed to win this football back? Davis. Let's get it across. He does. One more into Nonto. That was poor. Get it back to Trezor. And look, we're just stuck now. Look at the bodies they get back. We have to play the right pass sooner. Nonto. That's not bad. Play it across. Piro! Oh, he's hit the post. He's hit the post. Oh, my God. And that'll be the last opportunity of the game. We huffed and we puffed. We kind of grew into it a little bit after their goal. It was a terrible game of football, let's be honest. But Piro there hitting the post. Right at the end of the game. This could have been a point. It should have been a point. But West Ham are going to beat us. A couple of days after that, though, we would take on Leicester. And this time we managed to get a goal. But it is only a point again in the 87th minute Winks scores. Leicester have definitely started to improve their squad. The slumping form would not continue, though, as we managed to eke out a 1-0 victory against Brighton. And after that, another huge win against Fulham, where Pascal Strike Van Eywick bagging goals. Two defenders, but Pirro scoring once again. The lead us nicely back into the FA Cup then. And this game against the Bolton. We've had a really Really good run of draw so right we played Middlesbrough we played Plymouth now we played Bolton in the fifth round it's what the the quarters after this or the semis the fifth round the quarters in the FA Cup I don't know but we are edging closer and closer to the potential of a trophy which is exactly what I want here in season number three I've rotated the team a little bit obviously as you'd expect the side to be rotated just a touch giving away a pretty decent free kick here for Bolton and we are kind of having our little I don't know, post-season, post-season, not post-season, but like mid-season slip here. Uh, what was Fatou doing? One second, he's running up down the line perfectly, and then the next, I didn't know where he was. Reeves, Fatou overlapping. Oh, I might have timed it perfectly. I did. Fatou on the inside. Fatou, he's going to make it 1-0 as expected. Greaves with the assist. We're seeing a youth academy player finally come into the team and have a little bit of an impact in Greaves. And I am loving it. But what a great goal again from Fatou. E easy signing of the season. I don't care if we're only like 24 games into the year. It, this is an easy signing of the season for me is Fatou. Greaves, looks that one up to Eka TK. Who waits? That was clever. That was really clever. Trezor cuts it back inside to Eka TK. Back again to Fatou. That was great defending. Although we're going to pick it back up with Greaves on the outside of the box. Try to curl it. This is good again from us though. Fatou this time burst of pace. He's inside. Fatou puts it just beyond the post. It's feeling a lot nicer than the Plymouth game though. And definitely a lot nicer than the West Ham game where we just couldn't create anything. Are playing a really strong side though against much lesser opposition. So I have to think that part through. That was a clever foul in my book. A corner now for Bolton. And I thought they were going to go short there. Oh, we get away with it. Fatou, great. Greaves, start making your run, lad. I'm going to cut inside there. And then again, ah, it was too late. It was too late. He's off, isn't he? He wasn't off. What was the control, Trezor? He wasn't even off. That should have been 2 0 and comfortable. Oh, not just before half time. Beautiful Ballard. And again, defending well. Ballard's having a great game. We'll have a pretty early second half corner. I'm going to knock that one in. It's decent, but well blocked. I could do something similar again. Get a bit more on it this time. Ekatike! What a save for Baxter. Third time's a charm, right? Third time is a charm. Ekatike! Third time is a charm. It's 2 0. It's exactly what we needed. Means we can make a couple of subs as well. Gelhart coming on. And we're also bringing Chair on. Trezor and Fatui will both come out. So both wingers coming off. I'm going to play Greaves out wide because I'm pretty sure he could play there. Uh, Gelhart will go in at camp. Keep going, Joe. Oh, that's lovely from Greaves. He's very good. Gelhart across. 
Ekatike, back of the net. There we go. That's lovely from Gelhart as well. Unselfish. 3-0. Comfortable. But Greaves, again, just looks... He looks pretty special right now. Wow, they've opened up massively here. Gelhart's going to fly all the way through. And he's going to make it 4-0. Oh, my God. They have pushed and continue to push. But the gaps now are, are huge. Well, really easy win in the end. But I think the big takeaway there for me is Jonathan Greaves. I, I haven't given much thought to it. But he looks extremely good. He's showing great potential at 18 and I think as time goes on we're just going to give him more and more game time I love the fact as well that I could just move him to the wing if I needed to potentially a really special player there for us we were back to the league after that though in Crystal Palace where we beat them 2-0 but Van Eywick scores and gets himself sent off so we're going to be missing him for the next game. Pirro with another goal as well, though. And the next game was Brentford. And we went with a very strong 11, but only a 1-1 draw. They scored in the fifth minute. Pirro missed a penalty. Nonto was the goal scorer for us. Which, once again, leads us very nicely into a cup game. And this time, it's going to be against Watford. We have had the kindest of cup draws. This is actually the quarterfinal. And we have gone really strong for this one. But I cannot move away from Greaves and Ekatike up top in the cup, as well as Gomez in the goal. These guys deserve these opportunities. And Watford is another chance championship side so we played what a league one or league two team two or three championship team so we really have had a a blessed running I, there's just no other way you can say it it's been a really nice running i don't want to underestimate or sleep on anyone i just i know we're having a lot of joy against these lower league sides which is making me happy but it does also make you think once we go against one of the bigger sides is that going to be a stumbling block but you have to believe with this run of games that we've like been given that we are set here, right? We are set for an opportunity at the cup. Get Josh there. Whip it across into Greaves. That's lovely. Greaves then back across. That's lovely to Fatu. Oh my God, if he scores that, that might have been goal of the season. Oh, what for the wide open? Like, I did not expect them to play this wide open as Wilford Nonto rattles the pole. Obviously, subject to that transfer with Liverpool, nearly leaving Leeds United. But he's still here. He's still a Leeds United player and committed at this moment in time. Keeps it. Slides it into Van Eyewick. Van Eyewick then into Hugo Eka. TK. Oh, fires off a powerful shot saved by Backman. Tried the brace last time. One of them was from a corner. That's not a bad corner in. But he can't win the header this time round. He stayed down. That is very bad news. Ooh, Greaves plays that one through to Nonto. That's a lovely ball. Well for Nonto. Knocks it inside. Keeps going into Eka. TK. Oh. Couldn't get the shot off. We dominated the first half, but haven't scored a goal, which just leaves the door wide open for Watford. And the biggest thing there at the half is Ekatike's injury. So I'm going to have to bring him off. Pirro will come on. It's a great sub. But we did let Joseph go on loan, banking on the fact that we had both of these boys. Free kick into the second half then for Watford. I'm feeling like they... I thought I was going to roll it. They haven't. They've gone for it. And it's gone over the bar. First opportunity there for Watford. Not really been in the game. Is that going to be a ball onto Pirro? It is. Oh, Pirro, knock it back. Oh, he knocked it back too late. Van Eyewick in the end. Oh, Greaves. Stills it, Greaves. Oh, that would have been huge. So close to it being 1-0 Leeds United. Now, we know Pirro can get up for these. But I'm going to knock it in towards Josh. Oh, who hits the crossbar? That's the woodwork twice in this match. You really are causing a problem. It's not a problem that's seeing us score right now. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, massive save, Andre Gomez. They may not have done much this game, but we've left it neck and neck. So moments like that are huge for them. Fatuu this time. That's great footwork from him. He's going to slide it back into Piro. Slides it back to Fatuu, who just couldn't go quite beyond his man. It's tight in there, lads. It's tight. Oh, Doug steals it from Asparilla. It's into Greaves. Greaves wants to run. Fatuu, oh, it's a terrible touch, and we are plotting our own downfall here. Phillips, the game is getting a bit, little bit long in the tooth now. Van Eyewick, oh, back into Fatuu, wasn't a great ball. There's no time left on the clock, really. Not much to happen for whoever doesn't have the ball here. But we are going to win it back. Is this the potential last moment that we're going to get to create anything? As Josh plays it over to Trezor. Trezor then tries to play inside. It's a terrible pass. It's the story of the game. We're going to a replay unless this goes to extra time. And it does go to extra time. But when you hit the woodwork twice, I don't think is this going to be your game. They haven't really had that much. Gomez with one huge save. But aside from that, not really bothered me. Wide. Van Eyewick inside. 
Fatou, Van Pirao, Fatou, Van Pirao! Pirao may be the saviour, the substitute is going to make it 1-0 here in extra time. And after that, I'm going to make all kinds of subs. We need to freshen up the legs. Some of the lads out there are knackered. There's so many tired legs on this pitch right now. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to play it. Oh, I was trying to keep going. With Tre oh, Trezor stands himself up. Trezor keeps going. Trezor stands himself up and keeps going and he's going to punish them. The foul met nothing. Trezor, the other substitute. In the 170th minute, he's going to make it 2-0 and surely clear now for Leeds United. It's nothing more than what we deserve. It'll be devastated, but... We've been all over them. We thoroughly deserve this one. And those two goals in the first half of extra time will be the difference between Leeds and Watford. We're going to go through to a semi-final in the FA Cup thanks to this huge victory at Ellen Road. Watford gave a bit of a fight. They were hard. They defended well. But boy, did we deserve this. But as a result of that game, I actually think we picked up two injuries. And uh, did we? No, we actually only picked up one. So I kept Trezor on. He didn't keep his. And it's only five days for Ekatike. God, we are being smiled upon right now. We followed up that huge win in the cup with a 3-2 victory against Sheffield United. They're rock bottom, right? With nine points. Piro missed another penalty, though. Because I'm pretty sure that's what it means, a penalty mess. But he does score, so does Nanto, so does Jorginho. And that leaves us with just eight games left of the season, sitting in seventh. We do have a game in hand over Chelsea, but West Ham have a game in hand over us. So the, the race for Europe really is going to be all over the shop in the final episode. Because between Man United, Chelsea, us, West Ham, and potentially Spurs... There is going to be some insanity. I can feel it. There is also insane news, too, that we're going to be taking on Coventry City. I, I can't believe the draws we've had. We have got very lucky, but I can't believe the draws we've had. We take on Coventry City in the semi-final of the FA Cup. And then our potential finalists at Ipswich and Newcastle. You're damn straight that I want Ipswich, because every time I played against Newcastle in this game, they hand it to me. They absolutely destroy me. So we definitely want to be taking on Ipswich in the final. But if this isn't a, just a gift for a trip to Wembley, I do not know how we will ever get this kind of opportunity again. You also have to consider when it comes to that fight in the league that we still have Liverpool, Newcastle and Arsenal left of this month. And Tottenham, Manchester United and Man City of the final month of the season. So we definitely have the hardest month out of anybody left in the league. But we shouldn't actually forget the notion that if we go on and win the FA Cup, that's Europa League football. So we get our European football as as long as we win the FA Cup. So maybe that is the route to getting European football for Leeds United here in season number three. I want to say a massive thank you to you guys for supporting the series. Thank you for all the love, the regular viewers that keep coming back, man. I really appreciate you guys. I can't wait to get into season four and finish off this season and just keep on going. I'm really enjoying the save. I'm glad you guys are as well. I appreciate you all. Take care. Uh, all the socials and stuff are down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you for the season finale next time. I'm out.